Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo. Today, what we're going to do is talk about adrenal insufficiency. If you guys were here with us last week, we talked about Cushing syndrome. So basically, when there's way too much cortisol. If you missed that lecture, click on the link below and it'll take you back to that lecture. But today, we're talking about the opposite. So when there's not enough cortisol, we call that adrenal insufficiency. Of course, like always, we're going to do a quick review just to get you guys back in the groove. You know the hypothalamus secretes a CRH that works on the anterior pituitary gland, releasing ACTH, which works on the adrenal gland, which produces cortisol. So now if you come here and take a closer look, I want to let you guys know that at the adrenal gland, how are things categorized? We got the outer outer portion referred to as the cortex and the inner portion referred to as the medulla the outer portion the cortex it has three zones you can say the zona glomerulosa the fasciculata and the reticulars so in today's topic you definitely want to understand that the zona glomerulosa is responsible for producing the mineral corticoids referred to as aldosterone and you already know the zona fasciculata is responsible for your glucocorticoids which we're talking about is cortisol we're obviously going to get into a lot of details about the zona reticularis in the next few lectures when we talk about uh, sex androgens. And of course the medulla, you know, we're going to talk about the norepinephrine and epinephrine. Again, in today's lecture, we're going back to what happens now with the body when there's too little cortisol. That's referred to as adrenal insufficiency. So some of the signs and symptoms you're going to see is uh, the patient's going to be very weak. Patient's going to exhibit uh, weight loss with a bit of anorexia, lots of fatigue. Uh, muscle aches as well, orthostatic hypotension. So that's opposite of last week when we learned about when there's too much cortisol, there's gonna be hypertension. Of course, some GI issues and the patient will talk about having salt cravings as well as sugar cravings. Labs is a very, very important thing. You have to see what's going on in the labs. When we, when we talk up over here, we say over here, we gotta do the serum electrolytes. So definitely measure the sodium levels, the potassium levels and the hydrogen levels. It's going to be a big clue. It's going to tell you what is the cause of the adrenal insufficiency. Is it a primary cause, secondary cause, or a tertiary cause? Another thing you're going to notice, eosinophils are going to be increased. Cortisol levels will be low, of course, in all three situations as well. And you definitely have to measure ACTH levels because if it's increased, it's going to tell you that it's primary. And if it's decreased, it's going to tell you it's either a secondary or tertiary cause. So let's talk about the causes in more detail. Again, what do we mean by primary, secondary, and tertiary causes? We've already thrown these terms out. You guys remember, anytime we say primary, we mean that it, the problem is actually at the level of the gland. So, primary means that the problem is at the level of the adrenal gland. What's going on? Cortisol levels will be decreased, of course. The adrenal gland is not functioning. So if the adrenal gland is not functioning, that means that the cortex is not functioning. The cortex, like we said, over here is that it produces the aldosterone as well as the cortisol. So that means this patient's aldosterone levels will be low as well. Now recall, what does aldosterone do? It works out the kidney, specifically the DCT, distal convoluted tubule, as well as the collecting duct. And what does it do? It reabsorbs the sodium and gets rid of the potassium, also gets rid of the hydrogen. So if the aldosterone is not being stimulated or not being produced, what happens? Instead, the patient is going to have low sodium, referred to as hyponatremia. The patient is going to have an increase in potassium, referred to as hyperkalemia. And the patient is going to have too many hydrogen ions, referred to as metabolic acidosis. So that's a big clue. That's why we definitely have to make sure we're checking out the labs. The ACTH levels, on the other hand, why are they going to be increased? You see this red arrow over here? It's showing us to be increased. So take a look again. We know that if cortisol was in fact being produced, from last week's lecture, we learned that as cortisol increases, it goes back to the hypothalamus, goes back to the anterior pituitary gland and suppresses it. So that way it balances it. Now if cortisol levels are not being produced, of course, now you got a feedback loop telling the hypothalamus, telling the anterior pituitary gland, hey, produce some more. So now what's unique about primary adrenal insufficiency is that you have an increase in ACTH levels. And what does that cause? It causes an increase in MSH levels. MSH stands for melanocyte stimulating hormone. It is a byproduct of ACTH production from POMC. So keep that in mind. And that MSH is responsible for the skin and mucosal hyperpigmentation, a unique feature which is only going to be seen in primary adrenal insufficiency. Okay? Now for adrenal insufficiencies, we have acute causes and chronic cause. Acute means sudden, something suddenly happened. It's usually due to a massive hemorrhage, due to either septicemia caused by Neisseria meningitidis, or a DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, or endotoxic shock. This, it's all referred to as a Waterhouse-Friedrichsen syndrome, okay? 
For a chronic situation, that's where we call it as Addison's disease. It's usually due to an atrophy of the gland, uh, something more chronic long term. So most of the time in the US, it's an autoimmune condition. It can also be damaged due to different infections such as tuberculosis, HIV. And of course, we have if a cancer metastasized to the adrenal glands, it can also cause adrenal insufficiency. What do we have up over here in green? We have the colcentropin stimulation test. What is colcentropin? Colcentropin is an analog, a synthetic form of ACTH. So in a patient who has primary adrenal insufficiency, meaning the adrenal gland is not working, you give this patient colcentropin, which is ACTH. Do you expect it to, do you expect the cortisol levels to rise or stay the same? Of course, they're not going to rise, they're going to stay suppressed because the adrenal gland is not working. However, we're going to see in a second when we talk about secondary adrenal insufficiency, how it's kind of different. So let's get right into it. This time something's happening at the level of the brain. Remember, up in the pituitary gland, pituitary gland over here is not releasing ACTH. So that's what's going on. The ACTH not being released, that's why the adrenal gland is not producing cortisol. So in this case, if you do give the patient cosyndropin, the ACTH uh, analog, of course, the patient will start producing some cortisol. So that's a thing that will help you distinguish between secondary and primary causes. And of course, in secondary cause, the ACTH levels will be low, as you can already imagine. So is MSH levels going to be high? No. So MSH levels will not be high. Therefore, this patient will not have any mucosal, no skin hyperpigmentation at all. Okay. And aldosterone. Aldosterone levels will be normal. Now, why is aldosterone levels normal? Because aldosterone is not under the control of ACTH. So ACTH is low in a secondary cause. It's not going to affect the level of aldosterone. So that's why, again, the labs are so, so important. Because now your sodium levels will be high, your potassium levels will be low, and your hydrogen ions will be low, which is normally expected. Awesome. And the last one is your tertiary causes. What is a tertiary cause? Basically, think of tertiary, think of treatment. So this patient has been on long-term treatment with some glucocorticoids. All of a sudden now, if you stop this patient, you stop all medications, the patient will present with adrenal insufficiency. So one thing to keep in mind, if you ever have a patient who's on long-term glucocorticoid therapy, if you need to stop the treatment, definitely taper it down slowly. Do not abruptly stop it, okay? And of course, the labs will be the same, just like we've seen in secondary adrenal insufficiency. How are you going to treat these patients? Well, again, keep in mind, well, if it's a primary thing, you know, down at the adrenal glands, that means the adrenal gland is not functioning. That means both glucocorticoids are missing as well as mineral corticoids. So of course you give both cortisol in the form of glucocorticoid and you give aldosterone in the form of mineral corticoids. However, if it's something up in the brain, like a secondary thing, then you do not have to give the patient mineral corticoids, AKA the aldosterone. You just have to supply the patient with glucocorticoids. What is the toxicity of having too much glucocorticoids? Think about what we talked about last time. In last week's lecture, when a patient is uh, using glucocorticoids for too, too long, the patient gets Cushing syndrome. So think about last week's lecture in Cushing syndrome. We talked about too much fat, the patient's gonna have a big belly, the patient's gonna have the buffalo hump, moon facies, hypertension, hyperglycemia, uh, what else, osteoporosis due to the weak bones, and the females are present with amenorrhea, okay? So toxicity, keep that in mind. And of course, remember, glucocorticoid therapy, Abrupt cessation of it results in a tertiary cause of adrenal insufficiency. That's it guys, that's it. I know that was quite a bit and you gotta keep it straight because it could get complicated on an exam, but take some time, definitely review this video one more time if it helps. So next week, what are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about the adrenal six androgens. So definitely come back, it's gonna be a fun lecture. And uh, until next week, I want you guys to uh, like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely share with all your friends. And uh, until next week, uh, make sure you guys have a good week. We'll see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.